Jabonining. Jabonining. Ani and good day. My name is Adele Lusmore and I'm a Treaty Indian from Shibonining. My community is at the entrance to the North Channel on Georgian Bay. And I've put a white dot on the map below me to show where we're situated. In the summer of 1916, a local cottager named Dr. Helsher went on a six day canoe trip. And he later wrote a description of that trip and compiled a map. So I thought it might be interesting if I did a video reading the descriptions he wrote and showing you the sections of the map that he made. I hope you enjoy it. Dr. Helsher was from Mankato, Minnesota, in the United States. I added a blue triangle to this map in the southern part of the state to show where Mankato is. He had a summer cottage on George Island. And this is the sketch of his property from a 1915 survey. It shows that he was on lot 27 and that his cottage was 20 feet by 28 feet with a five foot veranda on the front. His dock is also shown. Killarney Channel is on the right side of this sketch. The channel separates George Island from the main part of Killarney Village. In the summer of 1916, Dr. Helsher hired Alfie Prue to guide him through a six day canoe trip. Alfred was born in February of 1891, a son of Genevieve Jane Prue and a grandson of Jean-Baptiste Prue and Josette Lang. Two years after the canoe trip in this story, Alfred joined the military to fight in World War I. He served in the Canadian Expeditionary Force and was stationed in Siberia. The steamship Empress of Russia, pictured here, brought him back to Canada, and he arrived home in June of 1919, seven months after the war ended. Alfie died in 1984 at the age of 93. His British War Medal, like the one pictured here, is in the War Veterans Display in our community hall in Shibonining. I'm going to show you a couple of images as Dr. Helsher describes how to get to Killarney. This image shows the routes that the steamers traveled in 1916. And Dr. Helsher said, the place is easily accessible from the Twin Cities, St. Louis, Chicago, Cleveland, Buffalo, and New York. From 24 to 48 hours should bring you to Killarney, Ontario that jewel set in the azure blue of Georgian Bay. A quaint village of half-breed Indian fishermen whose imposing front street is given over to the lowly pig running its young, where the cow and its calf has the right of way, and dark-skinned children with numerous dogs, ducks, and geese clutter up the waterfront. It is best reached from the Twin Cities and Chicago via Sault Ste. Marie to Cutler, Ontario, and thence by mailboat to Little Current and Killarney. From Chicago, St. Louis, and the east via Toronto and Collingwood, and then by steamer Germanic, Caribou, or Manitou to destination. The image shown here is of the steamer Caribou.
So here we are at the beginning of the trip. There's Killarney Channel in the middle, and there's a lighthouse marking both ends of the channel. And Dr. Helsher says, the canoeist leaves Killarney early in the morning going east, rounds East Killarney Light and paddles leisurely down the coast. Here's the first stop at the entrance to Chickenishing. Philip Edward Island is close by on the right side of the map. Those little white rectangles you see represent houses, camps, structures of any kind. And closer to the upper left corner, you can see what looks like a chain that he's drawn. That's what he used to represent the mountain range. The dotted line is the route that he and Alfie took on their trip. Dr. Helsher said, in about an hour he lands. To the left is a small log hut used as a chicken house. And just beyond and to the right is the home of George Solomon. Pick up your canoe and be prepared to make the longest portage of this trip. One and a half miles. Should you feel so disposed, Mr. Solomon will hitch up his old gray mare to a sand sled and portage you to George Lake for two dollars. The trail follows a good wagon road. Reaching George Lake, you pass through it into Rat Lake, follow the river, lifting over three dams, and by noon, you reach the lumber camps at the foot of Goggies Lake. The caretaker, Mr. Wilson, will be only too good to crack a cup of tea for you while dilating upon the virtues of his pet cat, Susanna. He will urge you to tarry, for he seldom sees a human being. But being wise, you push on. Up through Goggies Lake and then the portage. Here you will find some difficulty in finding the trail, but if you look for a large dead cedar tree fallen inland, you will know that you are at the right place. It is well cut out and blazed. Be sure to keep to the south side of the grassy meadow and always look for the blazes before proceeding. The portage is easy and soon you stand on the shore of West Lake with the shack on the right hand shore. Through West Lake, up the Narrows, and Johnny's Lake appears. By this time it will be five o'clock, and I would suggest spending the night in Pitt's hunting shack just above the dam. Try fishing above and below the dam. As I go through the rest of Dr. Helsher's directions, I'm going to add a yellow arrow to the map so it's easier to spot what he's talking about. Next morning, pass through Johnny's, Crooked, Brush Camp, Three Mile, Balsam, Fox, and into Harry's Lake, and camp at the Narrows. Should you not be in a hurry, try for Silver Bass at Twin Lakes, or try to climb North Mountain. This climb will repay you, for you can see the surrounding country like a panorama spread out before you. Today, the place Dr. Helsher was talking about is called Silver Peak. Leaving Harry's Lake, make your way into Panage and stop at Dan Sheehan's place for dinner and to replenish your provisions. By night, you should be at the outlet of Panage, 
where a good camping site is found at the portage. The next day should take you through Walker, Long, Cross, Charlton, Storehouse, and into Whitefish Bay, camping near Cameron's store where meals, lodging, and provisions may be had. The following day should take you to the Indian village, McGregor, where you portage into McGregor Bay. Then paddle east, keeping a large split mountain in the distance as a beacon. All the islands in this bay have numbers painted on the rocks. Follow these numbers as indicated on the map until you come to Island 947, which is not an island at all, but a small shoal with a surveyor's stake set up and engraved thereon the number. This shoal lies directly in front of Split Rock Portage. You can slip your canoe through this split and into a small lake, then a lift, then another lake, a lift, and you are in Bay Fin Inlet. Paddle south to the mouth of the inlet, where on the left-hand shore is a sandy beach and good camping grounds. Spend the night and next morning round Fraser Point. Paddle down Fraser Bay to the lumber camps, then directly across the bay where you see the islands portaging over Rat Portage and into Killarney Bay. In the distance, you will see the village you left six days ago. Dr. Helsher says a person can do this trip in six days or six weeks, whatever they want, because there is so much beautiful scenery to take in. He also notes that blankets are available at Mrs. Jackman's store in Killarney. In closing, he says, carry a light silk tent and don't forget a bottle of shellac in case you puncture or damage your canoe. In all cases, follow the map. You may be wrong. The map is not. For up-to-date information on traveling the lakes in the area, I suggest you contact Killarney Outfitters or go to their website. They have lots of information. I'll put a link to their website in the description box under this video. Also, if you would like a copy of Dr. Helsher's map, I have an image of it on my website at www.killarneyhistory.com. The JPEG image is just under four megabytes. I'll put a link to it in the description box too. I hope you'll join me for another one of my videos.